good afternoon to all of you okay good sir afternoon. sir on behalf of gt plus institute of engineering and technology for women and department of mba uh, we take this opportunity uh, to welcome uh, dr meera mandir sir uh, when we approached him he readily accepted for your invitation and uh, he has taken his uh, you know time out in his busy schedule and uh, he is present there today we are very happy sir we had a chance to interact with sir some 2 3 years before uh, when uh, uh, sir had come to uh, the previous organization rns institute of technology in bangalore so i remember uh, uh, the thoughts he had exchanged with us and always ready to help the students whenever we uh, ask for any kind of you know knowledge sharing so it's wonderful sir to be uh, here so formally i take this opportunity to welcome you on behalf of our students management hod sir and the department of mba thank you sir for sharing joining today okay in this moment uh, we remember our pandit sir uh, the founder uh, of our uh, gtps institute of engineering and technology for women in his absence and also in their absence we welcome our secretary madam principal sir ceo sir uh, who always uh, supports our uh, activities on behalf of department of mba i would like this opportunity to welcome uh, dr nagalingappa ji professor and head director strategic initiatives uh, who keeps pushing our limits and keep trying uh, something new things for helping our students uh, i welcome you sir formally for this webinar thank you dr ashok kumar also i have my esteemed colleagues with me uh, professor mamta madam professor sudhakar sir professor pavitra madam professor shaman sir professor usha madam uh, professor uh, pavitra madam okay ashwini professor uh, soparnika and all the team of mba and uh, finally i also welcome my dear students okay uh, who are the future leaders of our uh, country so formally i welcome all the students to this uh, uh webinar i request now sudhakar sir to briefly introduce uh, our uh, uh, guest and expert today dr niro mandir sir yes uh, good afternoon all i hope i am audible yes yes, yes. yeah so uh, i am uh, super excited to introduce uh, this was person of today's event we cannot be more privileged than today to have such a great personality to address our students dr nirav mandir uh, dr nirav mandir has been instrumental as a chief human capital officer with shri ramakrishna exports private limited srk uh, world's largest diamond and jewelry manufacturing and export conglomerate uh, it's generating a revenue of more than 1.3 billion dollars uh, he showed us the strategic responsibilities for srk's global hr ir Uh, industrial relations administration hsc csr and compliances he is also the project administrator for srk state of art manufacturing facilities uh, certified by the us green this is a south korea a phd from advanced hr from iim ahmedabad mphil post graduate diploma in industry safe spin MSW, LNB, and it goes on. He has published six HR, IR, HSC-related research papers in various national and international journals. Uh, he is also certified lead auditor for ISO standards 9001, 45001, and 27001. A certified assessor for clean manufacturing, material flow cost accounting, psychometric assessments, value stream mapping, and many more. It's a wide range we have here. he is recognized for his untiring work with prestigious awards in his hr journey youngest hr professional of the year 2018 by national institute of 18 by times asin most influential hr leaders in india 2016 by world hrd congress so he has the honorary commitment towards uh, he is a life member of indian institute of corporate affairs Uh, it's in Haryana, life member and member managing committee, ISTD, uh, Indian Institute of Training and Development in Surat, member Institute of Directors, member Executive Council, SRK Knowledge Foundation, 
is chairman hr and training committee sgcci the southern gujarat chambers of commerce and uh, uh, sir, his sir. president hr forum yes thank yes, you sir. for your yes, brief sir. introduction about our chief yeah. guest i yeah, there is much more i'm uh, sorry yeah. thank you hello ashok go ahead with the program other technology will kill us i think there is some glitch uh... ashok yeah there, there's a uh, hitch in the uh, network so i with all these honorary commitments uh, i welcome uh, the resource person of the day uh, dr nero mandir ji uh most welcome sir thanks for giving me this opportunity ashok sir thank you sudhakar sir you. now i also welcome professor jayan and uh, professor aparna madam who has joined for uh, today's webinar i request naglinga professor to make the presentation remarks thank you very much ashok i think that uh, go ahead with the program technology that uh, 40 minutes uh, glitch will come if time okay, permits sir. i'll speak at the end go ahead go ahead Okay, sir. Give the chance uh, to sir only. Okay, sir. I request Dr. Nira Mandir sir to take over the sessions. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Ashok, for this August invitation, and uh, Sudhakar ji, Dr. Nagalingappa, and the learned professors and the academicians. It's always a privilege to be among the academicians and feel like I've been started my college journey and the uh, PG journey. It's always good to be among all of you. Thanks for the. Uh, kind invitation, uh, Sudhakar ji. Uh, thank you very much for your generous words put into the introduction to it. Without the further ado, I would like to slightly charge the students with respect to the current topic which we are going to deliver for this uh, session: is the leadership skills for aspiring managers and an unbiased perspective. When Dr. Ashok uh, spoke with me for the first time, he said, "Like we'd like to have a session of you." So I was wondering, like, what kind of a uh, topic I can suggest. Uh, in the interest of the uh, students because these are the students of current time and the professionals of the future nearby so this is the topic which is really close to my heart that what kind of two skills are required in the due course of time where you all may have your prosperous careers with uh, various conglomerates and various business houses and even some may start as a entrepreneur so just before starting the session i would like to refer this quote from a very famous physicist and a scientist um, albert einstein which says the wisdom is not a product of schooling but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it generally it the dilemma prevails in our mind being a student that once we do with our course of a degree or a certification uh, that's it that is the end of the learning and the dilemma is not true because it's just a starting once you through with your uh, academic career and when you start to pursue your professional career there is a very thin line in between and one has to respect that thin line and it's myself It's a so just a very like two entire so there was a super bike of one of the logistic company which was doing the, the packing for the the rehabilitation and doing the stuff for all the packing and moving when someone is changing their home or residence or the office this type of logistic services are required. supervisor was courteous enough and he was like enough persuasive to do to accomplish his task in the due time line and there was a assignment when one is to deliver a kind of a set of the sofa and to a respective apartment and when they reached to the premises and found that there was no electricity the supervisor charged up their boys that boys there is no electricity and we are committed to our goal and we are committed to our timeline so i think we should be taking this sofa set through the stair gas and the guys were surprised the helpers who were supporting that particular task 
and they somehow started after reaching to almost tenth floor they almost drained up and the target was to take that to a 18th floor and then again that guy was like having that leadership capability where to charge and influence the people and then he motivated them further and somehow they managed to take up that sofa seat on the 18th floor and when that supervisor called the owner the owner started bombarding to the supervisor despite of having the best efforts and in time consignment he was bombarding at the supervisor and when the hang up the phone he said like guys we are having two news one is good and one is bad and the guys were like even totally exhausted they said like what are those two news and he said the good news is we have taken up the target to the 18th of floor they said that what's the bad news then and then he said the bad news is it's the wrong tower so you all can imagine doing the perseverance and efforts in a single direction doesn't only lead to the success so according to me the mantra of success is nothing but productivity or doing the effort but in a right direction along with the resource and that is all about the success what i mean so supervisor was hard working enough to do and accomplish that task but he was not in right direction and that's the reason he could not ultimately pursue his goal or the success so this is a learning from all of us all the students who are aspiring to be the profession in the due course of time that how to put the efforts in a right direction and today subject is pretty interesting how to use the skills in the uh, due course of time to achieve those targets pretty interesting thing first we really need to establish to get where you want to go first you need to know where you are so today is a time when you are about to accomplish your degree you are about to accomplish your academic career and about to start your entrepreneurship or the professional journey so it's really crucial to understand at which level we are spending right now when i'm saying which level it doesn't only mean accomplishing the degree only but i'm talking also about the level of expertise the level of skill set the level of the competencies which we are holding while completing this degree or the academic career so it's really important to understand and identify those parameters which is like prevailing within us i would like to just walk you through with respect to the uh, the scenario of a decade starting from 1970s when we talked about the industry 1.0 and what was the scenario by then and what is the current scenario after almost uh, 40 uh, 50 decades so starting from 1970 when uh, our grandfather used to work for the entire life in a single organization if they had been taught that okay one has to move the organization to have the good they said like you are we are really talking nonsense because for them it's like do the loyalty towards the organization the the committee men was the respect the organization was and they were concerned about the pay for attendance and increase uh, uh, when the industrialization started in india when the global workforce started emerge in the any long term incentive plan been inculcated into the uh, uh, the companies the business house in the service talking about the flat in the coin so now is the time when we are talking about this journey 2020s when we are talking about the gig economy we are talking about the hybrid model especially service sector they are enjoying the privilege to uh, like by working from home but especially in the manufacturing when 
the the businesses are having the assembly lines or the manufacturing facilities so it's not always possible for all the functions to work from home because the physical presence is required so we are living in that era that we can't avoid what is actually ha happening around the world we are talking about the flexible compensation because now uh, gone are the days when the person is satisfied in doing only in one job even the organizations are allowing them to work for uh, like one or two options so this type of uh, the employment scenario which we are experiencing as of now and things are changing really rapidly because had it been the case somebody would have asked me that uh, at srk what kind of uh, working from home or a remote working would look like so i would have not even thought of uh, twice before pandemic but this pandemic has really made us thought on that particular level that this type of work environment even is possible if you talk about the uh, shifting from job to work scenario and shifting that how the technology and how the digitalization is actually impacting the businesses you can see from this slide i am not going into details because we are already learning uh, short of time so i'll just walk you through just to give you the sense that like where we are uh, intending to go when you're talking about the single job i already brief upon and how the artificial intelligence and automation is actually disrupting the uh, process of any uh, business function and any manufacturing Uh, kind of uh, environment. Uh, the interesting thing which I found uh, recently, when you all might have aware regarding the Coursera online learning platform, so they released the Global Skill Index report, and recently been published. And now, what they are talking about, you can see from the slide itself that they they were considered in three segment that uh, uh, top hundred countries in India. In, in the world, uh, which uh, what are their stain in that particular skill set? So when we are talking about uh, technology, we are talking about businesses, and we are talking about the data sciences. And with uh, sheer surprise, the India's rank is on 67th with uh, respect to the global skill capabilities of India in nutshell. And this all by if we are do the inculcation of the entire uh, graphics and the entire data being provided to us and uh, release the picture then we can assume that the market of data analytics whether it's uh, data analytics pertaining to any businesses technology skill set or anything it's currently holding the market of 2 billion dollar which is like to, to be shoot up to 16 billion dollar by 2025 you all might be thrilled to uh, get this detail that this is actually uh, this uh, stand of india in comparison of the global platform and it's rightly said and it's especially in the current time that the data is hitting the process and technology is killing the value chain when after, after 2008 global recession when one journalist asked to the ceo of the goldman sachs that how did you lose your business and then the answer was really simple it was sudden so no one was knowing just before one day that this type of global economic recession even could the the shaken the entire world and the uh, various countries uh, in 2008 and that was a sheer surprise so this is the kind of a uh, case which we'd like to present that these are the thing which is really hitting hard to the any business and we really need to be prepared being a student because now once we through you know through with your this course you are going to start your career in respective capacity just wanted to share some data as uh, being an indian where we are standing pertaining to the uh, global competition especially if i talk about the indian gdp part so as of now the 51% of the indians are self employed means like they are highly either into agriculture doing their any kind of a sme or msme segment business but they are ultimately contributing 10% of the total gdp if we talk about the it and it especially very famous in the uh, south india in the almost 0.8% uh, of the uh, population is directly or indirectly engaged and they are almost contributing 8% to the india's gdp 
and almost 67 percent Indian requires the food subsidy. But the surprising factor here is the unemployment rate. If I just do the average of last 12 months in India, it is almost 7.91 percent. So unemployment is the one concern, but the main area of concern is the less wages. So I think that needs to really think upon with respect to the various bureaucracy and the business housing. That's the core challenge. And this is the environment which you all are going to have your uh, foot mark and going down your presence within the various businesses. This data is really interesting. If you can just spend, you will spend one minute in that. According to the Forbes survey, 1955, the average age of any listed companies were almost 60 years. And see the situation in 2021, it has like dropped down to 18 years. So almost we can say uh, four times decline happened in that particular uh, span of uh, any organization within the Fortune 500 companies. And with more surprise, in 1955, there were almost 6,000 companies where went into the Fortune 500 list and came out. But you would be surprised and more happy to know that, that there are still 76 companies who were there featured in the list of 1955, and they also featured in the list of 2021. So what were those competencies of those organizations who can actually were there and they are still existing into the Fortune 500 list. The thing which we, uh, you all need to ponder upon in the due course of time is the skills. According to the Oxford survey, as you can see from the slide, the 47% of the existing job profiles are going to be vanished. So the important thing over here is not the process. You would be surprised to hear the statement. The important thing is not the process. The important thing is how to improvise the process of process. It's quite complex sentence, but if you, I can just elaborate it in. So process is not important merely. The, in, the process of improving your process is more important. So whether it's the, your skill set in the professional environment or skill set in acquiring the new skills, acquiring new knowledge is important, but how to do it's when we're talking about learn, unlearn, and relearn. So that is more important in the current aspect. If we are talking about the corporates, they are always complaining that uh, the academia, they are, uh, the, the students who are like, coming out from the academic background and academic colleges, they are not really competent and they are not employable. At the same time, the colleges and university uh, are always having that challenge that the corporates are not supporting to provide the practical training and the practical infrastructure to the students. And as for the Google jobs, like 46% of the employees, employers are feeling the shortage of the compatible candidates. At the same time, the you can see the 7.9% in the employment, unemployment rate. So if you see both of the statement, if you combine, then you can find that both are contradictory. And it's the, the uh, role of both the corporates and the academia to work hand in hand in the interest of the professional, in the interest of the businesses. And if you talk about the, the factors driving the chain, like how the automation and the respective um, machine learning and the artificial intelligence is actually changing the process, and I'm not going into details slide by slide, but you can just see the entire scenario where actually the reskilling and like acquiring the new skill is really important by benchmarking that particular skill set in the organization. And if you talk about the skill requirement, as I said earlier, it's really ambiguous and hard to find and hard to acquire, complex in nature, and easily gets outdated and really short in supply. So I just wanted to make you through that one case study how you can actually invest in your skill set and how you can actually take the premium out of it as once you start your professional career because now the organizations are more concerned about the niche skill what the candidate is having 
and because they don't want the monotonous students or monotonous candidates uh, who, who has the routine skills or kind of a skills which any ordinary student may have, but they are more concerned about the premium skills and they are ready to pay the premium uh, in the terms of CTC of that particular uh, time frame. You can, I already shared the uh, slide, you can get the details. Just wanted to make you share the current generation, how the generations are, uh, various generations are actually working within this organization and what are those uh, kind of uh, three segments when we talk about the baby boomers, we talk about the, the generation X and the millennials who are working within the organization. And this type of a perfect, uh, you can say, amalgamation of the, the culture where the all three generation, many, there are many organizations where all three generations are all the working at the same time. And this is the scenario where the millennials who are digitally native would like to uh, uh, have their uh, mindset with respect to this of 3C and uh, interact and engage. So I just wanted to quote a famous quote by Daniel Kahneman, who was a famous psychologist who said, like, we generally are contrary in our opinions and our impression and judgment. And so is the case when we pass out with a very good rank within our CGPA uh, from our respective organization uh, for university or colleges. And we feel that we know many things, but generally that sense of pride gives the uh, kind of a hint of the uh, overconfidence and we generally fail in our decisions. And this is the standard example. Uh, the accommodation might be knowing this Dunning-Kruger effect, the amount of confidence is required, but if it crosses the certain level that it becomes the even more confidence and then we start taking the wrong decision for our career or for any matter. And I think the um, example when um, Mr. Trump tweeted uh, this um, to the global uh, population. And especially for the students who are actually like going to pass out from your and starting your professional journey, it's like Thomas Friedman has said that it's really a, like we are preparing for something with a, a kind of a sport, but we really don't know which sport we are going to play. And it's not uh, always required that if you are passed out from finance or a HR or a, a kind of any operational uh, management that you are ought to have the career in that particular field only. That's not required as of now. If you are intending to have your career in a, a contradiction to your degree, it's always welcome as this point of time when the organizations are really looking for the skills rather than the degree which uh, any candidate is having. And the kind of a simple uh, comparison I wanted to show all of you that how the leaders who lack of awareness and how the leaders who know themselves. So what are those difference between those two uh, traits? And I would like to just walk you through some of the uh, traits of the leadership and which are those kind of uh, leaders with a different skill set where they are contributing to the uh, respective organization. And these are the kind of uh, some of the various traits of the leadership which we can uh, discuss upon. And leadership may just segment the leadership within these three to five a segment, then and we'll see the examples also that what kind of uh, leadership any individual is having. So you might be seeing this uh, superwoman named Safra Cards, uh, who is the chairman of the Oracle. And uh, the tagline which I just quoted over here is the, the, the philosophy of the company. So if you are there at the Oracle, the silver medal is the first to the which they say and which shows the commitment toward their goals and their objective within the organizations or their targets. And they are talking like they are thoroughly following the smart goal practices. When we talk about the smart goals, it will be specific, miserable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So these are the some of the uh, criteria which this organization is following along with the leadership. Tony Hishes, you might have not seen or heard his name before, but he is the CEO of uh, one of the famous company called Zappos, 
was build the empire of in the footwear industry and almost a $1 billion big enterprise. And they were talk about the people leadership and we, because they say that you can't deliver a good service from unhappy employees. And when your own employees are not happy, you can't expect them to do their best uh, and to contribute and to justify their own portfolio. And in, as their more focus is there on the relationship within the organizations. And talk about the Jeff Bezos, the process leader, because they are into a retail game and they are running the large conglomerate within the retail industry. So their focus must be there on the volume and the volume is their margin. So they can't compromise on the volume part and their uh, criteria of business and improvising on the business is more the revenue and the one volume model. If we talk about the uh, another aspect of the leadership is the people leadership. Uh, Mr. Richard Branson, the uh, leader from the Virgin Group, and they talk more about the people. And I firmly believe that uh, the performance of any employee uh, can not only be depend on the the monitoring or the non monitoring aspects. It's like also there in the correlation of the social thread where the uh, employee is having with another employee, their buddy, their peer, their supervisor, and their organization. So the amount of thickness which prevails uh, as a social thread within the employee and the organization and their ecosystem we can expect more productivity out of it. And that's my own belief uh, pertaining to the uh, people leadership. And that's Jimmy Rometty was a former chairman of the IBM and can be considered about when IBM, you, we might be knowing that they were the pioneers in starting the artificial intelligence in the late 70s and they applied the various artificial intelligence in starting from the health sector to the respective uh, businesses. And they are the leaders in, and so the reason why company was there in Fortune 500 leads almost five decades back, and still they are as part of the uh, Fortune 500 list because of the innovation, and you can say a thoughtful leadership. Or nowadays we are talking about the intellectual property and the intellectual leadership uh, kind of a, a thinking which they are having in their organization. And we all know Mr. Bill Gates is a data leader because they are believing that data is the new oil and data speaks the truth uh, without bias and uh, to the some extreme, I must say. So this is all about the various leadership. So the three things which you'd like to uh, have in your mind to have a, a successful career is the adopt approach. So one has to be agile enough to learn new things, to adopt and acquire new skills. And that's how you can do the capitalization of your strengths and you can improvise on your strengths and you can minimize your weaknesses. And then you can lay down your own leadership path. I don't want to go into the details of the how the skills are attached to a leadership framework that you can pursue it uh, later on. And these are the various parameters of the uh, leadership, which you can always uh, go through in the latest trend. But I think I would like to have you notice this thing. As I told you earlier, especially within the organization, the, they are not looking for ordinary candidates or ordinary students with the ordinary skills. If you really want to have your career in the extraordinary phase, then you really ought to acquire the extraordinary skills within your kind of uh, and that state of mind is required um, and how to achieve that particular thing and because it's part of the topic and this I wanted to have five seven minutes into it that how the various biases or rather unconscious biases are actually impacting that particular skill set and that behavior where we refrain to learn new things, we refrain to know new things. The first thing, so these are commonly six uh, uh, kind of uh, unconscious bias which uh, uh, are prevailing uh, and that we really need to understand what it is all about. So first is the conformity bias. So that uh, 
there was an exercise and very famous exercise been um, captured with one of the famous psychologists when 10 10 students been asked to sit in the school uh, one room and 10 out of 7 students have already been conveyed in the answer of the question and the question is like uh, the picture been seen uh, to the slide and they been asked that okay uh, compare the exhibit a and exhibit b and now let us know which line of exhibit a matches with the which line of exhibit two so generally uh, we can see that i'll share the answer in the later slide but uh, only one student was thinking that uh, I think line A is matching with the exhibit A. So I think I should be giving the answer. And when the student gave the answer, the rest of the group uh, who were pre-informed said that no, it's not the case. Actually, line B of exhibit two is matching with exhibit A. And the one student who gave the neutral answer with full of kind of a rational answer he gave out of his cognizance, but he got confused. And that was the case. That while we were talking about the right answer, but generally we get biased with the group. We don't understand and we don't have, we don't carry enough faith in our own cognizance that whatever I'm saying, I have to really be firm with that particular answer. Uh, and then rather than driving or dragging with the opinion of the large groups. The second uh, unconscious bias. Uh, kind of a category is the hello and on effect. The psychologist Edward Fondick, when uh, he, he touched upon that theory, that uh, while meeting someone, it generally happens in the interview, that when we start taking the interview, we keep on building the opinions or being judgmental about that particular candidate. If the interview starts from the good note, then we keep on getting the good vibrations and we keep on building the good vibration of that particular candidate and it might be the possibility that we may even hire that uh, candidate or we might even ending up by hiring that candidate and the opposite is also true if we are the interview didn't start on the good note then even um, it, it might be the possibility that we, uh, we may not shortlist that particular candidate and this type of unconscious bias happens with the interviewer. So the advice, the golden secret to all the students who are appearing for the interview is um, just answer in that particular manner so that one can have the less opinion about yourself rather than being less judgmental about yourself. So one has to be neutral and um, kind of uh, rational enough by giving the answers to the questions of the interviewer so that one can have uh, uh, challenge in building good or bad opinion about yourself and that's all about the hello and horn effect the third one is the gender bias like no offense to the any community or any creed or any uh, gender but it is this scenario when generally being saying that it's being uh, uh, recorded and studied also that if some girl or some woman is perceiving something then she might get considered as an aggressive while the same attributes uh, can apply and then we may find that particular male or a man more confident and there are numerous studies reveals that this type of scenario is happening in many organizations so we have to really be a neutral and rational enough where we stick to our opinion we be firm with our decisions and then can contribute within the growth of the organization we talk about the similarity bias one study revealed, uh, it was there in the, one of the research paper published by the Yale University, that uh, especially in Silicon Valley in USA, they hire more students from US Berkeley. Uh, and then that might be the possibility. Even in the India, we, we might have seen from the various job portals that some businesses have specifically written down that we want only IM, ABC, or kind of a, a very, very premier institution uh, and we don't want any other candidates. So they, they, the preference generally they give to those students and it might lead those organizations to kind of a similarity bias and the, the, the concept of diversity and inclusion might not be uh, prevailing uh, in those organizations because you are owning that the group which comes from the same culture 
same kind of a pattern and the same uh, thought process. So that is required. The one more bias we talk about the confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is like when we are taking any decision, we search and try for the evidences that makes our decision true, and we keep on doing the research how our decision is like true and remains true. And that was the famous case study of Coca Cola when in 1985, despite of um, everything was going good and smooth. Uh, due to the comparison of Pepsi, when they thought of to change their patent, change their uh, taste and their bottling and all, to redefine the entire uh, uh, marketing and the production strategy, just to uh, by having the assumption that okay, uh, the the customers might like that, but that was the biggest blunder of that company, and they end up losing the many market share in that particular business. This talk about the pro propitiating the bias, and uh, when generally we speak as the example was given in the first slide also that we have to be really firm in our decisions and we don't need to encourage the uh, what the group says even if the idea is there within the organization where the group can even be uh, starting that particular thing so even that kind of uh, idea can be having the good impact within the organization uh, to have the neutral standpoint. And in the last, uh, without further ado, I would like to give advice that what CEOs are advising to all the uh, professionals and the aspiring professionals um, once they take charge in the in businesses. When you are going to enter your uh, organization, first create the business impact. See, we're talking about the human resources, we are talking about the human capital, its investment. So I, I generally say that HR is must. There is no comparison. There is no um, kind of, a, uh, there is not an excuse, but business remains first. So whatever you are doing, if the business will run, then and then the business will do n number of activities pertaining to their human resources and their human capital. For that business has to run so whatever you are doing whatever you are proposing it has to be backed up by the business case which you are supposed to submit to your seniors and your line managers always see the larger picture i must tell you that one should not be concerned about the long-term short-term goals because if you are really concerned about the short-term goals giving a jump in the two three years five years down the line it's not advisable have a good now, tenure in respect to your organization to learn things, especially in your initial careers when the learning is really important for your entire professional life. So always have a larger picture with a larger mindset and with an open heart. Always set high expectation and communicate clearly. One has to be rational enough, neutral enough in their expectation and communication so that one cannot judge us, one cannot have build any wrong opinion on us and be forceful and challenge authority. I'm not uh, advising one of you to be rebellion, but you have to take your stand rather than dragging, being dragged through the uh, various uh, opinions of the group and know your stuff well. So as I told you earlier, you have to know your stuff well, you have to know your portfolio well, and you have to learn that particular thing and have a diverse mindset to yourself that why we should be limiting ourselves to uh, having the knowledge in our domain also. At least the general acumen of the business has to be there with everyone in irrespective of the business. One has to be neutral and take the individual charge. Always take risks, take chance, test new approaches and benefits to, to the business. Stand for your right again and you have to be objective don't be so nice so that uh, you can be eaten at the breakfast you have to take your stand and at the same time don't be called agile too because uh, uh, nobody likes to have the enormous arguments each and every time until and unless uh, you are having that valid point which can justify your argument you don't have to get into any kind of a uh, aggressive argument with anyone and Gandhi spoke about that particular thing very wisely that don't speak because until and unless 
your uh, words are not more beautiful than your silence so that is the uh, motto which one can follow in their professional career you don't need to be going with everyone as i told you earlier and this type of a common set of advice which uh, i can suggest uh, to all the aspiring professionals and uh, just i would like to end the session with a very a beautiful uh, and very deep shloka of rugveda which says nikarshad taap taade nahi nikarshad tenum taap taade nahi bhujakastra dullabha so this kind of a uh, thing which really means that if you really want to have your career in a fruitful journey then you should be really investing that particular thing and investing in your own skills investing in your own uh, knowledge which only can make you bright in the due course of time thank you very much to all of you over to you thank you so much sir uh, for this uh, uh, very interesting and uh, inspiring uh, information field you know leadership nan for our uh, young leaders upcoming leaders so i request uh, the participants to ask question uh, for dr nirav mandir sir students you can ask the questions you to also make a disclaimer that it's not mandatory if, until and unless they don't really have the questions <laughs> no sir they will ask <laughs> students you can ask the question so from our end we have a question like uh, uh, when we when you exhibited lot of research on uh, leadership uh, you know from very premier institutions so also you have worked with uh, uh, you no know, great leaders of the business organization and also society wise so what is your experience uh, clearly tell sir uh, today most of the times you know ethical unethical and uh, short time long time okay all these uh, what we call lot of uh, fights keep happening with the upcoming leaders so uh, what is your wise suggestion sir for the students because uh, we are forced to do lot of things as a part of our responsibilities in the business organizations yeah uh, very deep and insightful question and very hard question doctor says ever expected so when you talk about leadership uh, doctor shok i firmly believe so because there are two myths prevailing within the world that uh, whether the leaders are born or whether the leaders are made i truly believe that rather than uh, it's it's the dilemma that the leaders are born with some charis- um, charismatic character and charismatic skill set and charismatic knowledge i don't really believe so the leaders are always made by having their own pursuance and by having their own uh, kind of a passion towards doing something really unique and distinct so when it talks about the leadership it's always been that one should be having uh, uh, enough courage to do something extraordinary which anybody or the uh, common people uh, even would not dare to do so so i think this is the and, and leadership traits as i mentioned in my slide also it differs from organization to organization uh, out of the six uh, leadership trait which i have just shown i don't see that any leadership uh, phase is not good or less good it depends on the culture of the organization and uh, it it varies from the culture uh, of the organization so it again like when one candidate is aspiring for any interview in any organization one has to assess the culture of that particular organization and one has to also do the self introspection that am i going to be fitted in that particular culture because then it will be a challenge suppose if you are having that inherent uh, trait and which is not in line with the organization's culture then it might be a challenge as far as the growth of that particular candidate in the 
respect your organization so one i'm advising that one should be doing that thorough assessment of the organization culture and how the organization is taking care about their employees how uh, the organization is concerned about the environment and the ecosystem and the entire esg goal and then uh, one will be getting the better idea uh, whether to pursue that uh, particular career in that organization or not okay sir thank you so much sir students uh, any question to sir quickly ashok can i ask them to ashok ask the students to put in chat box if required yes sir yes sir yes sir students you can also send the question through your chat box uh, sir before we get to some questions i think so uh, i request naglinga sir to uh, interact with the sir for few minutes <laughs> oh thank you very much um, dr nirav i was at amdavad for about 5 uh, years right i think uh, hello something what happened ashok hello uh, uh, no sir go ahead go ahead sir hello sir so, sir can you hear me yeah yeah please dr naglingpa please tell sir can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you pretty much sir it is audible sir uh, sir is able to listen to you you can go ahead sir please i think he is there on mute okay yeah i yeah. hello yeah yeah you audible dr naglimpa yeah 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 i was at amdavad for about 5 years uh, way back 25 okay. years back um, okay. uh, we used to visit uh, surat baroda a lot large number of uh, our customers were from uh, surat baroda okay we were into manufacturing of electronics especially okay. end switches mechanical end switches right uh, so it was a nice you know i mean a type of leadership and culture they go together actually uh, one yeah. need to adjust to their culture and then you know grow plan to grow that makes exactly. uh, all the sense yeah rightly said otherwise it uh, it may it makes no sense either for the employer or the employee because both will true. be the errors of the irony then true 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 so uh, having uh, worked in uh, ahmedabad and uh, gujarat the uh, entirely uh, the type of you know uh, leadership exhibition exhibiting there and the culture of you know business culture right it, it is Uh, it is my perception that it differs from the other parts of the country too there in gujarat money in and money out is the formula right see being a, any business i would say and i truly agree with you doctor that uh, the ultimate objective of having any business is to generate the revenue true and that is the key objective and that's why i told you that uh, hr and all the employee activities employee welfare everything is must but business should come first because until unless that is not there the organization won't be in a position to do anything any single good thing for their employees so that at true. hr if i talk about my own company's example so we follow the quadruple bottom line approach where we talk about the people profit purpose and planet so this 4p we generally ponder upon and we we think that the all four p's are interdependent and it it talks uh, greatly about the uh, the uh, the the value of the interdependency within the uh, people and profit because uh, as i told you earlier that uh, one should be concerned about all the aspects and devaluating any of the aspect will lead the organization to the decline stage i would i would say true sir true so thank you very much ashok thank sir uh, yes sir we have one question sir uh, in the chat box by nishita paul one student 
she is asking you sir have you ever come across the situation where in your decision conflict in your de- in your decision conflict with any of the core ethical values you follow very tough question and even the session is being recorded but i won't mind uh, giving you a neutral answer so i uh, generally feels that uh, when you talk about the ethics and we talk about the ethics because these are two different word ethic and ethics ethic is the kind of a methodology which we are following uh, for doing any particular process and ethics is more about being uh, logical being justified and how we can uh, have the justification to our deeds or like to our work and that is how pursue uh, the word ethic and ethics i generally believe that when you are taking decisions in the interest of the organization it might be the possibility that it may disturb the the uh, management it may disturb the said group or the uh, biased interest of those who are not really thinking in the interest of the organization it happens especially in the initial career when the aspirations are really high and we are more concerned about contributing to our portfolio this type of um, kind of a criticism or kind of a dispute happens but one should not be really bothered about it because until and unless we know that we are taking any decision or we are deeply in interest about the interest of the organization we should not be bothered enough even if something happens some turbulence is happened but it's like the turbulence it's not the torpedo so we have to really be neutral in the decision making uh, especially in the initial career and should not be a drag which would be that's why i just talked about the conformity bias and the various type of unconscious bias how they are impacting our decision making and one should be really be aware of those biases and one has to take that stand in the interest of the organization and their own portfolio and uh, as far as uh, the turbulence becomes the torpedo then dr kalam has very wisely said that one should not be loving their job one should be only loving their work because you never know when your job stops loving you so i think that's the conclusive remark which i would say thank you so much sir so uh, sir uh, uh, students last 5 seconds anybody want to interact with sir a golden opportunity because sir is uh, running out of the time Uh, allocated time can we go ahead students anybody want to interact with sir okay i think so sir when uh, they will come up with questions definitely i will mail it to you and uh, sure? you can I always uh, too optimistic and i assume that uh, it was loud and clear that uh, they could not be reflect upon any questions <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay yes sir yes sir the concept was very clear and uh, i think so it's a area where uh, you know uh, experience and also uh, you know uh, theory and experience you know uh, should be practiced together and the leaders like you and also our sir uh, is also uh, making us to transform you know in the potential leaders and thank you so much sir for giving us this golden opportunity uh, um srk uh, always you know we love uh, the chairman sir okay sri govind dolakia ji and uh, i would take this opportunity on behalf of our management our uh, hod sir professor and head and uh, director strategic initiative dr naglingappa sir and the entire faculty and the students thank you so much sir uh, and also for miss padmini madam your esteemed colleague uh, for arranging all the things so smoothly and uh, especially for you to for giving us the time and very formally we request you to uh, come down when you visit mysore next time and definitely our students would like to listen to you once again sir thank you for having me and thank you for your kind visit uh, invitation for the kind visit and i'll hope we, that we'll soon catch up once this pandemic ends and uh, hope to meet you all and um, have the mutual learning in the new course of time thank you very much dr nagimpa sudhakar ji thank dr. you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir
it was Thank a pleasure uh, you know listening to you today thank you sir